Hello. It's a new diary. Isn't that exciting? Uh, now that we've uh, gotten to know Adeline Barnes and uh, the haunted diary that I did a couple of uh, months ago, and I can't remember her name, Evelyn. Evelyn, I uh, can't remember her last name right now. So sorry, Evelyn. Um, but today I am going to read from this diary written by a young man. I think he was about 23 when he read, uh, wrote this in 1931. His name is Marcus J. Marquard. Not totally sure how to pronounce that. M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D. So he went on a European trip with, I believe, people from his church. And um, he was very Catholic. And, it, and it's very interesting, very, very detailed. And I'm going to start reading that for you today. Before I start, I want to let you know, um, for those of you who are familiar with my channel and those who aren't, I I do a wide range of videos that cover like just vintage things. I, I, I like a wide range of uh, time periods and and topics. I, uh, I love to learn how to make things by, on my own, what am I saying, by hand or <laughs> whatever. Uh, whether it's clothing or food and I'm just just learning a lot and sharing as I go and sharing what I know and uh, sharing my successes and failures um, I, I have a lot of ideas for videos and it all covers I don't know the past uh, however yes I, I have been reading these diaries I started collecting a little over a year ago Adeline's was my first and I started reading through that um, and now I have quite a collection. I, I like like rescuing them. I like reading them and learning about these people so long ago. And I like sharing it because I, I, I don't know. I sometimes I'm a little torn, you know, privacy issues with these people, but they are they are gone. And I am hoping at this point their spirit understands that we want to connect with them and learn from them. And it's important, I think. But I really I don't know, I feel this is important to share the stories of just everyday people in the past, you know? Um, it's, it, I love it. I can't believe I didn't do this sooner, but I would be totally broke if I did this sooner. Um, but speaking of that, um, all this ties together. I just want to say I'm trying something new with these diary readings because I don't want to make my channel all about that. But in order to get through all of the diaries I have, uh, you know, without it taking 10 years, I've decided to set up an account at uh, buymeacoffee.com slash Kendall Brenneman, where I will be putting these diary readings for you to go and enjoy if that's what you're interested in. I'm going to read, I'm going to do like one episode to start each diary and put that on my YouTube. So you'll be, re you'll be seeing the first part of Marcus's diary here um, and then for further readings to finish off the diary uh, sorry I was a bird flew into my window um, <laughs> I think he's okay he flew off um, for, uh, for the rest of the diary you'll have to go over to buymeacoffee.com slash Kendall Brenneman and subscribe I've said it for like five dollars a month and and all the diary readings that I do from here on out and I'll, maybe I'll put Adeline's up there as well will be available over there for people who want to subscribe specifically for that just so that has its own place um, and doesn't get confused with my other YouTube things or um, you know it, it makes sense right it's also a way for me to try to fund the purchases of these diaries because it's not really a cheap hobby um, Yes, it is voluntary. I, I decided to do this and buy them myself, but I want to keep doing it. And I kind of feel like I'm rescuing them and sharing them and, and doing some like historical preservation and, and um, it's expensive. And I would appreciate the support uh, if you go over there and subscribe to that. I also am making PDF scans of the diaries. So if anyone is interested in uh, seeing the handwriting and reading it for yourself and maybe reading ahead and helping me with any research, you know, it's kind of fun. Um, I will put the PDF over there um, ahead of the readings 
so that you can get it, you know, uh, before, well, after the first reading or whatnot, whatever. What am I saying? Um, I will be putting the PDF up there before, before I finish reading the diary. So you can kind of read along or read ahead and, and share whatever you find with me. Um, it's just kind of fun to do that together. And, and they'll be over there for five, like five, I want to say euros, dollars, five, five dollars each. It takes a really long time to scan these, <laughs> um, page by page. But, um, I, I feel that's a, like a preservation effort on my part as well. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, your support just helps me collect and save these diaries and at some point hopefully put them in a in a safety deposit box or somewhere somewhere safer than my closet anyway that said um we will start reading i hope i covered everything mm, sorry to take up so much time how long was that really sorry but you know, i had to say that because of my new system i want you to be aware that i'll only be reading uh you know one episode for each diary from now on unless I change my mind and you will be able to find them over on uh, buy me a coffee so I'm very excited to get going and do you like my couch I was gonna say new couch but it's not really new I just moved it here and uh, kind of comfy we'll see how this works out so here we go this is Marcus's diary book D personal so I'm wondering what A through C were um, by the way, I, I will read it at the, well, oh yeah, you know, if you, if you go subscribe, you'll, you'll watch me read it. He, he took uh, some of his diary entries and had them published in this, uh, St. Joseph's Gleaner. Um, so <laughs> I'll read, I'll read that later as well. So he did mean for some of this to be public and shared. This is, he, you know, just took notes on everything. Uh, before I start reading, actually, um, let me share the one photo I've found of this guy right over here. He's, he's the child, he's the child I've circled. And then next to him is, uh, I, I believe his brother, Vincent, who I'm assuming is the person he calls Vin in here. So he's traveling with his brother, Vin. I'm just connecting the dots here because in this picture of the children, there is a Vincent, Vincent next to Marcus. So I'm pretty sure this is our Marcus. And I'm pretty sure this is our Vincent. Um, not sure how old they are in this photo. <laughs> a lot younger than he was on this trip. It would be amazing to find some pictures. He mentions having pictures taken with Vin, I think, in here. Um, but um, no, no pictures came with the diary. It would be really nice to see what he look, looked like, looked like. Um, but for now, this is the picture I have of, of him and his family. I think he was one of 12 children, if I read that right. And he was born in 1908 in Ohio, maybe Cleveland, Ohio. I have the address of the house his father bought in 1912. Um, I'll share that later. I'm still kind of doing research. I think there's a whole book I can read, like about the family and the house and everything. Um, but I have not bought that yet. If anyone else wants to, I will also be um, sharing resource links below so you can read more. Um, I will, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't really plan what I was gonna say. So let's see how much time we got. Gotta keep an eye on that. And I will start reading now. I'm really sorry for that really long intro. Friday, June 26, 1931. Since I had been up until three o'clock last night, I did not begin a new day until nine o'clock. All the others in our party remained in bed until 11 o'clock. I set out for the Franciscan Church, a few blocks distance from the New Yorker Hotel, where we stayed. When I had come in the church, I found out that all the masses were over for the day. Then I decided to look for another church. This I did, and a block or so away, I found St. John's Church of the Capuchin Fathers. I might not be pronouncing that right. 
and um, I believe this is the church. I did my research ahead of time this, this time, so I found some pictures of uh, some of the places that I think he visited. But here again, I was disappointed because there was to be no mass until 1215. I thought it was too long to wait for this mass, so a few minutes later, I was on the streets of New York once more. Seeing the Empire State Building off in a distance, I thought it a good idea to go in it and also to go up to the tower. And as soon as I had purchased my ticket, which entitled me to go to the tower... What? Oh, I'm lost now. Oh, whatever. It did not take me long to reach the building, and soon I had purchased my ticket, which entitled me to go to the tower. This ticket cost me a dollar. Now I entered the elevator that, I, that would carry me to the tower. It ascended at a moderate speed as it went higher. As, and as it went higher, one could feel a very strong ringing noise in his ears. But as soon as the elevator reached the top, the ringing did not bother one much. Now I was on the top of the tallest skyscraper in the world. From this perch, I got a wonderful picture of New York far below. Here in the tower, there is a lunch room and a gift shop. I bought a picture of this large building and also satisfied my hunger with a sundae. After this, I descended... Upon going down, the ringing noise was again felt. It even stayed with me after I had reached the ground. Once on the street, I went back to the hotel where I met the folks. They were just getting ready to go to the St. Patrick's Church to attend the 1215 Mass. I joined them. Cleo and Danby were not with us. Two taxis took us to the church. Since the traffic was heavy, it took us quite a while. Well, we heard Mass anyway. After Mass, I had to ask the priest to give communion to Daisy and Aunt Laura because for some reason or other they did not go during Mass. The priest gave them communion at the Sacred Heart altar. When this was finished, we left the church. Now we went back to the hotel where we met Danby and Cleo. Since hunger was getting the best of us, we decided to take dinner in the hotel. When dinner was over, the folks went to go in the Empire State Building, so I went with them. I did not go up in the tower again, but waited down below with Aunt Minnie, who did not care to go up. We walked around a while and talked. Before we knew it, the folks were again with us. Now we crossed the street and went into a department store, which I think is the one Mrs. Maisel worked at. And now I forget the name, but there's the picture. B. B. Altman. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's where they went, to B. Altman. Here, Vin and I bought a swimming suit, which I imagine looked like this. Then we hurried back to the hotel and Vin and I checked out. Quickly, we got cabs and went down to the pier, the docks of the Red Star Line where the, I don't know how to pronounce it, Belgian land. Also found a picture of that, um, was waiting for us. Uh, after getting our tickets straightened out, we boarded. All the folks went on with us. They don't allow that anymore, huh? We had to rush around to get a look at things because the officers were already shouting all visitors off. Some of the folks didn't even see anything. Pa, Aunt Laura, and Phil got a look at our room. They also got a look at the first class quarters. But now came the time for hurried goodbyes. The gangplanks were pulled up and soon the boat was underway. The folks stood at the end of the dock and waved us off. The ship uh, backs out of the dock and soon, mm, I'm not sure, it was in the river. Uh, while the boat was heading out to the ocean, Vin and I took a look around the boat. The tourist class have not as much space as the first class, but everything is fine. When the ship leaves port, men go about looking for stowaways. These men look in every nook and corner. I spoke to one of these men and he said they always find four or five stowaways on every trip. He said they try and look through the entire boat before the boat passes the pilot's house because uh, they can put them off. When we went down to our rooms, we found uh, two red slips which mm, contained questions we were to answer, such as your country, name, age, etc. We filled these out and returned them to the steward. In order to obtain a seat at the table for supper, we had to turn our steamer tickets over to the steward, who in turn gave us tickets, which entitled us to a seat in the dining room. 
Each table in the dining room is numbered and they vary in size from four to about 20. We obtained seats on table 42, which seated five persons. The three other people on our table were priests. Mm, let's see, he inserted something there that I can't read. Father, I can't, I think it's a French name. Alois, A-L-O-I-S, fish. Father Govert, G-O-V-A-E-R-T, a secular, a secular, <laughs> and Father Erkins, S-M-A-S-N-A, an African missionary. All these priests are very friendly. At the supper table, um, a, list, a list of all the tourist passengers was given to each person. This book also contained many other items of interest. After the meal was over, Vin and I walked about with Father Erkins. He told us many interesting things about himself. While we were walking about, the boat stopped and the pilot who had guided the steamer out of the river got off and was taken on board a waiting yacht. Soon we were on our way again. Uh, later, Vin and I met Father Friedman and Father Mayers, um, who were likewise very friendly. We also were introduced to Dick Rotterman, a passionate seminarian. He proved to be quite a fine fellow. I could feel that my stomach was not just as it should be. It was really upset, but after I walked a while, it was somewhat better. Vin said he felt fine. Just as I was about to sit down, Miss uh, Maves walked up and I spoke with her and Father uh, Erkins. <laughs> Father Erkins told us he was going to read Mass in the first class tomorrow. Uh, then he took us over and showed us where he would read Mass. It was in a wonderful lounge room. He was to read Mass here at 7 o'clock and wanted me to serve. After we had looked around a bit, uh, we went back to our quarters. After walking and talking a bit, Vin and I decided to turn in. There was dancing in the dining room, but we did not care for it. It was about 10.30, Saturday, June 27th, 1931. We overslept this morning and hence missed mass. It was about a quarter of nine when Vin woke me. We had to hurry and get dressed so we would not miss the second sitting, uh, which we were supposed to eat at. The first sitting is at eight o'clock, noon and 6.15. The second sitting is at nine o'clock, 1.15 and 7.30. Well, we got there in time for our breakfast. We have a very nice table. There's a large bouquet of flowers on it. After breakfast, as we walked on deck with Father Erkins, we found it was raining. Um, it lightning and thundered only once. An hour or so later, the rain ceased, but a heavy mist or fog settled down all around us. Therefore, the fog horn had to be blown continually. Uh, Vin and I sat down in the recreation room and wrote our diaries. While we were writing, um, bouillon tea, I think, was given to everyone who wished it. We stayed here until dinner time, 1.15, then we went to eat. After dinner, we walked to the deck for some time and watched a game of shuffleboard. We also walked to the top deck to see a game of deck tennis. Today, all the portholes were closed because of the fog. Vin and I went to our room to read and write. Dick Rotterman intends to bunk with us for the rest of the trip. He has not joined us yet. I am going to read now. Uh, it is Sunday afternoon now, and I am in the library. I want to finish yesterday's doings before I begin today's. Well, about five o'clock, the fog had lifted, so all the portholes were reopened. About a half hour before dinner, Vin and I left the room to get some fresh air and exercise before taking supper. We met Father Friedman on the deck and he joined us. After we had our fill, we went down to sea deck where the dining room was. Here we enjoyed another good meal. Uh, the fact is, one is really given too much to eat. With supper over, we again made for the deck in the company of good Father Erkins. SMA. We had tramped around the deck a number of times, edging our way through the many groups of people. You see, the tourist class really have not much space for walking when all the people are out on deck. Um, 
This is the only respect in which we envied the first-class passengers, because they had two very spacious decks to walk upon. Their decks were very long and about six to seven feet wide. Of course, there were other wider decks for their deck chairs. Um, otherwise, we were glad we were not among the first-class people, because they were truly a stiff crowd. The first class is surely no class to be booked in if you wish to have a good time on board a steamer. I know of the Benedictine priest who traveled first class on the steamer, and he mentioned this fact. He said, oh, if only I had someone uh, with whom to play a game of cards. In fact, on the second day of the journey, he came over to our smoke room. I do not know how he got into the Taurus class, because the first class and Taurus class are uh, locked separately from one another, but I guess his thirst for a good time made him find a way, <laughs> um, and enjoyed a fine game of cards, which made his heart content. I have also heard of some young people who came to the dances in the tourist, um, tourist class, because they enjoyed them so much more than the dances in the first class. Some people even transfer entirely over to the tourist class, where an ocean trip is enjoyed. Now I may as uh, well say a word or two about the third class. From what I have heard and seen, the, the third class has no joys to offer its passengers. Third class people have very little deck space, and chairs are rare. I have often heard it mentioned among the tourists that they really pitied the people booked in third class. Well, to get back where I had left off in my Saturday affairs, we were walking about the deck. At one turn in the deck, we, we met um, Father Philip Friedman and good-natured Father Mayers. Father Philip was anxious to get in uh, first class and really stretch his legs. He asked me to go with him, so we started out. We tried a number of doors and gates, but to no avail. Everything was locked this particular evening, therefore we gave it up and came back to parade around the tourist decks. There was a picture show scheduled for tonight with two performances, one at 8.15 and the second at 9.30. The library was converted into a comfortable show house. Um, Vince, uh, wait. Since we had been on deck so long, we were too late for the first performance, but in time for the second. It was a talkie. The title of the picture was Never the Twain Shall Meet. In my estimation, and also that of many others, it was a poor picture. After the show, Vin, Dick, and I stepped out on deck to get some fresh air and exercise. A short while after, we turned in. Dick slept with us tonight. His cabin was crowded with four in it, so he came to ours, which only had the two of us. It was not long before we were fast asleep. Sunday, June 28, 1931. I slept rather poor last night, even though I had a good start. I do not know what the trouble was. Uh, well, Vin and I arose at 6.30. We intended to serve the 7 o'clock mass, which Father Erkins was reading in first class. Dick intended to a Dick intended to attend the 7.30 Mass in the Taurus class. Vin and I waited for Father Erkins to, to take us with himself mm, into first class, but he didn't show up, so we thought uh, he had already gone alone. Therefore, we decided to attend 7 o'clock Mass in Taurus class. There were three Masses in first class and four in Taurus class library this morning. Father uh, Govar Govard? had the 6.30, Father Mayers, uh, the 9 o'clock, Father Philip, the 7.30, and Father Aloy Fish, the 8 o'clock. Vin and I served the last three Masses. Father Fish read the um, Espiritual... I don't know what this is. I should have looked that up. And um, something else. And preached a short sermon. Afterwards, Vin and I walked out on deck to await the gang uh, announcing the gong about announcing breakfast. With breakfast off our minds, we again sought the open air. The ocean was very rough today and naturally caused many people to be to be sick. Mm, I was affected a little, but not enough. Vin didn't notice it at all. Rosemary Mouse was very sick. Dick also had a good share. 
The Protestants had their services in common in the dining room at 10.20 a.m. Since I had lost quite a bit of sleep last night, I sought my bed and tried to make up for it. Vin stayed on deck and enjoyed himself. At 1.15, we were together for dinner. There were many seats vacant because a great deal of the people were sick. After dinner, I began to feel it a little more myself, so I went to my cabin and rested. I read a while and then slept. Soon Vin joined me. He was not ill, but just came down to read. He laid on his bunk, the one on top side of the porthole. My bunk was beneath his. Dick slept in the upper one on the other side of the cabin. While I was lying on my bunk and Vin had his head stuck out the porthole, all of a sudden a mighty wave uh, dashed much of its water through the porthole. Vin was so surprised by the wave that he did not have a chance to get out of its way. Hence, he received a quick, free shower. The water hit the wall on the other side of the room and wet many things. Since I was in the bunk below Vin, I did not get very wet. The bedroom steward came around in a hurry and closed the porthole. He closed all portholes on the deck because everyone had experienced the same thing. We stepped on deck about a half hour before the supper gong rang. <laughs> I love little stories like that, really. I really, really love these like little, little stories that people forget and don't write down, just get disappeared into history. I love little funny, funny stories. And then enjoyed a good meal. Vin and I tramped the deck again and also met two women, sisters, from Syracuse, New York. We had a very interesting talk with them. They had been over to Europe 24 years ago. I might say also that they are in our party. About nine o'clock I left them because I was not feeling well. Vin stayed. I went down below where, sad to say, I gave my meal up. After doing that, I felt better. Around an hour later, Vin came down and told me it was raining like cats and dogs outside. We prepared to go to bed because uh, we would lose an hour's sleep since the clock was to be set ahead at midnight. Every night now, it will be advanced one hour. I remember that. <laughs> That's rough. Um, I should remember that and head west next time I cross the Atlantic. That was rough. Uh, there was an orchestral concert, concert this evening, but we did not care for it. Just as we were about to turn in, Dick came down and followed suit. Monday, June 29th, 1931. How's my hair? I keep sticking out. Um, I'm not very good with my hair. I keep sticking. I see it. I see it sticking up. Monday, June 29th, 1931. Before I begin the day, I might say a word or two about the bedroom stewards. They are very common men and remind me of Henry Miller. They try to be polite and to please you, and to some extent they do. The trouble is they, were, they are uneducated and look sort of dumb. Well, masses were to be at 7 o'clock and 7.30 this morning, but... Due to the change in time, nearly everyone but the priest overslept. Father Fish had to go around and wake everyone up. Nevertheless, the first mass got underway at 7.30, and the second followed at 8 o'clock. Father Mayers read the first, while Father Fish read the second. Vin and I served both. We had to wait until 9 for breakfast, so we walked the deck and read a while in the library. At breakfast this morning... There were still many people missing. In fact, my stomach feels it a little. I feel best when I sit down and I'm quiet, so after breakfast I went to the library and did just this. Some two hours later, I went on deck with Father Erkins and Vin to get our pictures taken together. Vin gave the um, film to the steward to develop. We expect it back tomorrow afternoon. Following this, I returned to the library to await dinner. Vin called me when it was ready. At the table, we discussed the change Columbus the, the change Columbus took on crossing the ocean, and also the flyers of today. I felt a little better now. I went to the library to write my diary when dinner was finished. Then Vin and Father Erkins asked me to take a walk on deck. We walked a while and met Rosemary, who was feeling much better. We sat with her and talked some time, and later resumed our walk. I broke away and went to the library to write. The ocean breeze was really wonderful today. It was not as rough as usual either, 
but it rained off and on. I remained in the library until a quarter of four when the entire ship had fire drill. I remember that. Everyone went to his or her cabin and put on his life jacket, then all hurried on deck. The crew were shown what boats they were to man, and they were instructed. Nothing was said to the people. Mm, there, there, something, the drill was over. Can't read that. And all returned below to remove the life jackets. When the drill was over, I again returned to the library to write. While I was here with Vin, tea and cookies were served. In the morning, we had received consommé and crackers. The men were putting up the screens for the movie tonight in the library. They also tried to see how the talkie worked. They have everything ready now. It is Tuesday afternoon, and I have to finish yesterday's doings before I begin today's. Late yesterday afternoon, I played a game or so of shuffleboard. Then I enjoyed a good dinner, after which I walked the deck with Vin, Father Erkins, and Rosemary. Father broke away to read his office, and Rosemary followed suit and went to bed. Vin and I waited around until 9.30 when the second show began. Vin did not care to see the movie since he had seen it some time ago. The picture was Joan Crawford in Paid. Uh, Vin went to bed. I enjoyed the picture quite well. When I returned on deck, I saw the most beautiful moon and sky that I had ever seen. Uh, its reflection on the water was grand. With the steamer rolling over the moonlit water, a picture which words cannot describe was created. Before I turned in, I stopped at the smoking room where the bar is located. There I chanced upon a young man whom I had met when the steamer was leaving New York. His home was in Georgia, but he had been working in New York. He is on his way to France where he will practice his art of painting for the summer. He knows people in France. He is traveling third class and is uh, having a terrible time of it. The smell and the class of people with him are unbearable. This is the first time he ever traveled third class, and he says it is his last. His name is Bob blank. I think he meant to fill in his last name and did not. I wish I knew who this person was. A, another younger fellow was with him, blank Wilson by name, who is also rather nice. Bob says Wilson and some other fellow are really the only decent people in third class with him. Uh, but all are sorry that they bought third class tickets. They stole up to second class tonight for some fresh air. Bob always speaks of St. Anthony. A certain lady in New York got him interested in him, although Bob is not a Catholic. It was past 12 when I left them. In fact, it was past um, 1 because the clock was set forward an hour as it was last night. Thus, another day ended. Tuesday, June 30th, 1931, Vin and I were up to serve Father Mayer's 7 o'clock Mass. Then Dick and I served Father Govart at the 7.30 Mass. The steward of the library always has things fixed up as good as we could expect for Mass on a steamer. I took up two collections during two of Sunday's Masses, which went to the steward to cover expenses and as a tip. The water was very calm today, and the sun was in the heavens uh, in all his splendor. After spending some time in the library, Vin called me and said Rosemary wanted to take some pictures of the crowd. We went up on the top deck, and there had them taken. It's fun to find those. Come on, help me find them. For some while, after we talked here and quenched our thirst with consommé and a cracker, What is this cracker? It began to warm up here, so I went below to the library. Uh, I had not remained here long when Vin called me again. This time he said, Father Aloy Fish. I really need to learn how to pronounce that name. You was going to take some of our party through the engine room. I went readily with him. We uh, met down in the chief engineer's room. There were 12 of us. We all signed our names in a register book and we also put down the city. Six of the crowd then went ahead to the stairway leading to the boiler room below with, the with one engineer. 
while the remaining six, among which Vin and I were, awaited the call of another engineer to follow him. By the time he called, the others were already below. Well, we will forget about the first six now and go through things by ourselves. Before we descended, we were given rags, uh, garage rags, which we were to keep in our hands so we would not lose our grip on the steep stairs if our hands became wet or greasy. The stairs made of iron, though they looked perfectly clean, had a slippery coat of grease on them, which made it very dangerous. Well, we reached the bottom safely, where it was extremely hot. The steel platforms running all around the machinery and boilers were um, of iron, like the stairs, and also had the same greasy characteristic. All about us, there was all sorts of machinery, as dynamos, motors, and etc., for the ice refrigerator pumps to fill the swimming pool and whatnot. The two most interesting things were the three long axles of the three propellers turned by mighty shafts dri driven by the oil burners. The other interesting feature was the oil burner. They were 10 of these, a 190 to 200 tons of oil are consumed every 24 hours by three burners, by these burners. The oil is shot into them by pressure guns. One can see the fire in the boilers from the little celluloid eyes, as it were, in the front of the, in the front of each boiler. The fire is really terrible. After we had everything explained to us, we ascended out of the hell hole and returned to our quarters. When we, when we reached our deck, I indulged in a shuffleboard game until dinner. Ben and I went to the library to write when we had eaten. We stayed there, we stayed here until 2.45. At this time, we hurried out on deck to see the horse races. Uh, programs for the horse races were distributed at lunch. There were four races. A stretch about 75 feet long and four feet wide was marked off on the deck. This stretch was marked with lines running across the width about a foot and a half apart. There are six wooden horses standing about a half foot high which run this track. They are numbered from one to six. Dice are cast. If the dice fall with six and one facing up, for example, then horses numbered six and one advance one cross line. If two sixes appear, um, the... Oh, he, he, like, inserts words and they're really tiny. The pr something horse advances two cross lines. In order to jump hedges, ditches, and the like, which are placed on the track, each horse must get a double. Of course, the first horse that reaches the end wins. The people buy 25 cent tickets on the different horses and hence anxiously watch their horse advance. It is really a very exciting game. I was reading about this cruise. Um, I'll put a link below, I think I should have a link. But I was, I was reading about this very cruise and they mentioned the horse races and the things that they had available um, on, on board. It, it, it's so funny just, I mean, read, reading about it and, and then reading him explain it. And ah, I love it, I love it. History, I love putting these things together. Uh, we returned to the library after the races and wrote. Vin then went to the gym to get a little exercise. The gym is just a small room. It is located next to the children's playroom. Although it is a small room, it contains a good deal of gym material to keep one in tip-top shape. Oh, I think it was the same website that I will link to below. Also mentioned what what else was uh, on board the ship and what was in the gym. So he's like listing what's in the gym and they're listing what's in the gym. And it's really, uh, I don't know. I just, I just love that. It's fun. Um, there is a bucking horse, a bicycle like machine for leg exercises, a punching bag, a rowing machine and medicine balls and the like. Later we had our dinner of the, at the regular time and our customary walk. We witnessed a marvelous sunset and an equally beautiful moonrise. The moon shone forth in all its glory as it had done on the previous night. Vin and I walked about with Mr. Um, Hengisbo of Cleveland. 
Soon after, Father Mayers joined us, and he suggested that we have a beer. Vin took a ginger ale. Sandwiches are served free of charge with all drinks. A pink glass of beer... A pink glass? Oh, a pint glass. A pint glass of beer is 10 cents. But now I want pink beer. It was nearly 12 when we broke up. It was probably an hour later when Father Philip walked into our cabin and gave Vin a shower with some water he carried. Having done this, he quickly beat it. That's about all for today. So that, that covers all of June. Uh, and I'm going to stop here for now. Um, let's see, they travel through July. This is all July. I'm not going to read that in one sitting. Oh my gosh, that's all July. July, July. What's the end of their trip? August 4th. August 4th is the end of his diary. Arrive in New York, yep. So, nice long trip. I'll probably read half of July next time over on Buy Me a Coffee. Although, I mean, my gosh, that was only June 26th to June 30th. Um, but yes, we'll figure that out. But uh, we'll have a couple more episodes reading from his diary. Probably read, oh, I'll read the whole thing, except in the very back, he's got a ton of um, like sermon notes and Bible study things, and I am not reading that. I am sorry, that's not really of interest to me. I mean, I like, I like studying the Bible, don't get me wrong, but no, we're just going to read his diary part, so it's, it's till August 4th. Um, but that is it for today, and if you're interested in hearing about the rest of his trip, it, they get off the steamer, and they go through, shoot, where do they go? Definitely Italy. Um, oh, I forget now. It's been a little while since I read that. Uh, I, I am pre-reading ahead of time, so I can prepare the photos for you over here. I'm trying to be a little more prepared than I was with Adeline, but uh, I didn't read like through the whole thing uh, this week. So I forget where he goes. It'll be a surprise again. But yes, they travel throughout uh, Europe by train. And it's, yeah, he's got some other funny things going on and, and uh, it's very descriptive as you can see. So I will continue there. I'm not sure exactly when I will be posting the next episode. Um, I will try to let you know, but you can just go over there ahead of time. I'm definitely gonna try, I'm definitely going to post at least one or two readings each month over there. Really hoping to do two. Uh, so we can crack through them and not take forever. Um, but yeah, go on over there. The link will be down below in the description. I thank everybody who goes over there and subscribes and um, you're going to have a fantastic collection of diary readings and PDFs and extra things. Who knows? This is going to grow. Uh, I just started it out pretty, pretty uh, basic right now. I might add some other things. Um, but yeah, that's it for Marcus today. And uh, I'm not sure how I feel about the couch instead of the chair, really. Um, I have to think about that. It's not like the most comfortable way to read, but anyway, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, leave any comments or suggestions below. And I will see you next week. Bye.